Hello. Voices of the Void is a game about finding alien signals, discovering secrets, and bearing witness to existential horrors from beyond this world and or dimension. But what if we didn't do that? This game is a sandbox, meaning you can choose your own goals. Today, I will be setting the world record for number of curfuses purchased in a single story mode playthrough of Voices of the Void. Money can't buy you happiness. But in Voices of the Void, it can buy you curfus. And do remember, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. This is no longer optional. And although my content is free to watch, if you're feeling particularly generous, check out my Patreon where you can donate to keep pesky sponsors from influencing the direction of this channel. Now, let us begin. So, some of y'all in the audience might not know what's going on in this video. To remedy that, I decided to create a brief explanation of all the concepts that are going into this challenge run. Signals can be found in space. You find those signals with the worst computers known to man in a stinky observatory in the middle of nowhere Switzerland. You then download these signals by maximizing both your polarity and frequency. The bottom number goes left and right. The top one goes... After downloading the signal, which can sometimes be made harder due to rain causing the signal download to become funky fresh, it's time. Seeing as your signal sounds like... Shit. You need to edit your signals to actually sound somewhat presentable to the people back at base. To start, you need to upgrade computer level from the main computer where you can spend your hard-earned cash on upgrades, modules, and... stuff. After getting computer level, you can then upgrade a signal's level up to the maximum level of your computer's level's max upgrade level. Most signals will sound like... until you level them up to level 3, at which point they just sound like... The screams of hell! Now you can send off your signals in a box back to base, right? WRONG! Now you need to look at the email you received on your Windows XP desktop and look at which satellites they want you to get the hash from. Go over to the root console, type in sv.target alongside the name of the satellite you need to target, pointing the compass in the satellite's direction. Or you could just memorize all the satellite locations like me. Head out there and access that satellite's console and type sv.hash where you will see this string. Grab a paper of some sort, not IRL, that won't work for our purposes unfortunately. Use the report preset and enter the hash exactly as listed. Head back home after having done all that with your second hash, place the note on the box and send it off. A short time later, this drone will come by, pick up your box, fly off, and you'll earn some points based on a variety of factors such as number of drives sent, their level, whether you sent the correct levels for daily tasks and whether you sent both hashes correctly. There's also a number of other mechanics, such as servers occasionally going down, requiring you to reset them through a math style minigame, satellite calibration, gooseworks.rufus, or sometimes you'll be mining your own- Oh no, don't tell me that was the- Oh no. Now, for the challenge. I am going to be attempting to purchase as many curfuses as possible through the in-game store. Curfus is a robot that is used to provide companionship and remote server repairs for the player. So why go for more than one, or two? I don't know. Each Curfus costs 500 points, which is really expensive. So I need to do my job really well. Going for every daily task, repairing servers whenever possible for five free points, maximizing efficiency of dry production and preventing- uh-oh. Because if a blackout occurs, there's no processing and no downloading, so back to an earlier save with me! We begin like any other day in this game, using the worst equipment known to humanity to locate signals in space at what can only be described as a snail's pace. The radar's scrolling speed is sluggish, the download speed is prolonged, and the processing speed is... dumb. Quickly, we head out into the world to get an achievement that will grant us an early game point bonus. Argemia plushies. By gathering all three, we gain a massive 30 points. I then also get 20 more points through things like level zero drives and server repairs, each of which granting me a generous five points each, letting me get computer level one before the first day so I can level up drives to level one worth 10 points per drive instead of five, and larger point bonuses on daily tasks. A, um, a whale of an increase for sure. We are going to be living off of free food for the longest time. If there is food and I see it, I am 
gobbling it up. That includes mushrooms. Listen, food costs money, and um, unfortunately, I have more important things to spend my money on than food. I then decided to turn up my graphics, making the game look very beautiful. But unfortunately, it caused my recordings to lag, so I had to bump it back down to spud mode. Huh. But I will not microwave that skull. <laughs> All right, now I'm haunted. That does remind me, I need to actually do this. Um, radar history. Radar speed. Detector quality. Actually, cooldown is pretty interesting because it just adds four seconds, so. Service to, oh, pink. <laughs> this is supposed to be threatening, but you know. Silly alien cats are something of a, uh... I was about to say an asphyxiation of mine. That's... Upgrades. Upgrades. What are they? How do they work? Which ones are the best to get? When attempting to min-max your gameplay in anything, it's essential to understand the power associated with each choice you are given. If you are going for maximum points, you don't want to spend your money on... No good upgrades. My setup for this challenge looks like this. Maximum download speed, computer power, detector sensitivity, sensor success rate, 8 points in filter size, and 0 points in everything else. If you're wondering why I didn't upgrade server stability, it's because each server that goes down is a free 5 points. Which, as you may be able to imagine, is quite good for this challenge. We end off week one with two whole curfuses to our name, a pittance in comparison to what we shall achieve in the coming weeks. Beginning on week two, you'd assume there'd be more going on. What? Uh, here's a sick trick shot that I landed. The red one, to commemorate the red sky. Get in the pit. <laughs> Already the early signs of insanity were starting to take root, Donk. but not to worry, because I had a whole six curfew by the end of week two. This does nothing for my mental state. I decided to commit to a long-term commitment for this next week, getting an achievement that would award me with 2,000 points. Oh, I don't think I was supposed to do that. By feeding it. it. You can cause it to grow in size until it reaches a point at which it resets and pops out an egg. The achievement requires you to feed the plushies 100 shrimps in total. The only provolone is sourcing the shrimp. Wait, why why provolone? What the fuck? That is such a cheesy joke. Day 17. I decided I'd start a live stream live right here on YouTube. It started out pretty normal, but it quickly devolved into chaos. Gun! I feel like that whenever I say it. Whoa, my God, Kerfus! What? I have a, I have a, I have a sound for this. Awaken! Awaken! <laughs> oh my God! God damn it! They all got stuck on the pallets. Oh, here he is. He, he's around. Where is he? Oh God! Oh Lord, he coming! This is so... this is bad. This is literally bad. Why would anyone want to watch this stream of all streams? <laughs> Cruelty Squad Mo I was thinking the same thing with the border! Voices of the Gorb! I love that! I love that title! Oh, nope, that doesn't work anymore. He ripped out all of my piss! If you want to watch the full replay of that video, the link will be in the description, as well as in the title card. Having wasted 465 points by leaving my shrimp unattended with ah, it. I then spent the next day buying the remainder of the shrimp needed to feed the plush, which, of course, gave us money. Lots of money. Yes! 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 <laughs> He's good. By the end of week three, I had 11 curfuses, so many that they no longer all fit inside my pool and I'd have to start finding alternative places to store them. On week four, things happened. But that would have to wait because I was beginning to run low on food. Uh oh. And although nature was providing me with Mushroom. fungus, man cannot sustain oneself Mushroom. on fungus alone. Mushroom. What was my solution? 
Shrush. The delicacy of the universe. Shrush. Although I'm allergic to it in real life, it is the single best food item in the game. Let me explain. Each food item restores a certain amount of health per bite and lasts a certain number of bites. Using simple calculations, we can determine the actual value of food to that of the points we spend. Burgers are worth 0.4 yum values. MREs, 2. Shrimps are worth 5.3. Restoring 80 hunger at a cost of 15 points. The only issue, cats. Our rerolls love shrimp, so much so that if it's out of your sight at all, they will simply walk up and eat it, even when it's in the fridge. This is the actual explanation on how I lost 465 points because of this thing. The solution, we hold on to the shrimp for eating. They can't steal the shrimps out of your back pocket, but there's also a better food item you can get absolutely for free. When the Arrero tree house is being built, you'll notice these large cat beds on the ground that you can sleep in. What the fuck? By sleeping in them and dropping under a certain hunger threshold, you'll be fed by them and wake up to yogurt. This, uh, hmm, yogurt, restores a lot of hunger and even a good amount of your sleep. And due to the fact that it's totally 100% free, means it's the best food item in the game. Anyways, on to what happened this week. Uh oh. Down with that. <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> week five was even worse. How can it possibly get worse? I hear you think to yourself mysteriously. Well, it has to do with the uh, remember how I mentioned it restores your sleep? Yeah, this means each day is now even longer. Each minute lasts around three seconds, and on average, Kale sleeps for anywhere from six to eight hours a day like any healthy individual should. That's a big roach! Meaning, using some simple maths, we get to an estimated time per day of about 48 to 54 minutes. Now what happens when we add those six to eight hours back onto the clock? So, 72 minutes per day it may already sound torturous, but not to worry, because things got even worse. At the end of week 5, I had 21 Kerfuses, a collection that would make anyone with bad financial decision making quiver. Week six, not even a full week, just five days. Surely things got better. No, it got worse. The obelisk, it brings yellow wisps with it. Sure, they may look pretty, but they're actually incredibly dangerous, being one of a few select things that can actually kill you. Don't touch them, and don't let them touch you. Doing so results in a slow, painful death as your limbs are slowly pulled off your body and you're left to bleed out on the ground. Don't do that. Instead, get back to work. Work on getting more signals with your caffeine infused. Work on getting those hashes. Who cares there's a killer uh, whatever these are. Work on appeasing your bosses back at base. You're just a slave to their demands anyway. It's not like they even care what's going on here. They know aliens exist. They know they're here on Earth. And they know that you are disposable. So get back to work, Weiji. Your time here is precious to someone that is not your... Well, shit. I so, there we have it. The end of the challenge. How'd we end up here, you might be wondering? Well, this is a sort of transitory location. You may call a lift, and I tell you to shut the f Going into this challenge, the mere concept of having 25 curfuses was not the original plan. It was, instead, how much money can you get in this game? How much money did I end up getting in the end? In total, 17,079 points, which also gives me a potential 34 curfuses, but due to upgrade costs and accidentally leaving shrimp unattended and out of my sight, I only have 25 curfuses. Woe is me. But with that being said, I'm sure this point record of 17,079 points could easily be broken. I didn't play at 100% efficiency at all times, I could have reset achievements at the start of my playthrough, maybe my upgrades weren't the best, difficulty options may open up more point potential, you could not leave shrimp unattended with it. Point being, I encourage you, if you think this record is beatable, do it. There's no reason to do so. It's long, it's tedious, it's boring, 
it will drive you insane. Oh, that's cool. I can do that too. <laughs> but finally, with all 40 days complete, finally sit down and play this game like normal and relax.